And what we're going to do now is uh, actually apply um, one of these optimization models to our geometry, which is maybe a little bit more complicated or it's harder to do on your own, and see whether we can uh, get kind of an optimal result for the location of these openings to minimize the amount of sun coming into our building. So we already have the setup here. We have inputs and we have an output. So I'm going to create another Galapagos node. For the genome inputs, I'm going to reference all of the sliders that are controlling the location. So first, I'm just going to hide all this uh, that example. I'm going to re-show all my sun projections. Okay, and then um, for my fitness objective, I'm going to plug this into my total sun area. So I'm all set up. Uh, I think to make this easier to see, I'm also gonna visualize my panels with color again. So this isn't necessary for optimization, but it's gonna make it easier for us to see what's happening. And I'm gonna visualize basically, again, the area of the panel to color. So I'm gonna take all the scale panels from my geometry and create an area node. So again, this will calculate the area of my new panels in the centroid. I'm going to feed that into my visualization setup here. So the panels I'm going to plug into the geometry of the preview. And the areas I'll plug into the sort and into the T parameter. So now this preview shows my new panels. And the um, bigger the panel, the more red it's going to be. So as our geometry is changing, it's going to be um, easier to see where the bigger panels are being put and where the smaller panels are being put. So now I have that set up. Um, once you have one of these optimizations set up, you can mess around with changing some of the parameters and seeing how your output adjusts. This is important because you want to make sure that you don't have some range in your model where the geometry stops making sense, basically. Um, because the Galapagos is going to um, randomly generate a, a set of designs to start out with. Uh, and this is where the lock comes in handy. So before I mentioned this lock idea, um, our model is pretty heavy now. So each calculation of these projections takes a while. So if you start to drag these sliders, you see it takes a really long time and it gets really laggy. So if we want to just play around with a few of these positions of these sliders, we can lock the whole uh, interface just by middle mouse clicking or right clicking, and going to the lock solver. And then we can play around with these sliders and nothing will update. See, as I move these things, things are turning orange because since it's not updating the solver, uh, it doesn't have any information. But then once you move all the sliders, you can go back and unlock. And it'll regenerate all that geometry. All right, so now we have that set up. I'm going to turn on the points again so we can see um, how Galapagos is basically moving these points around to uh, change our geometry. Uh, I'll double click into the Galapagos editor. And again, we want to minimize the total sun area coming in to, uh, to our building. So I'm going to set this to minimize. Go to solver. And then hit run. So now if I click on the first uh, icon here, you can see each uh, solution being generated. So again, because our model is much heavier now and each solution takes longer, it's not going as quickly as the example before. Um, so in this case, the solution might take a lot longer uh, to solve. You can see that now, like as it's changing the points, the panels are, um, the size of the panels is changing globally. And then there's some result um, of the projection on the floor. And that result is being captured in our total sun area parameter, which is also changing. So what Galapagos is doing is it's changing those nine sliders uh, and then recording the results coming from this number. And then at the future generations, it's going to take the best positions of those points and try to come up with better and better positions to optimize the geometry. What's cool about this is that um, 
Galapagos doesn't know anything about your geometry. It doesn't have any intelligence, right? Like it doesn't know that uh, this result has more panels on the north or more panels on the south. All it knows is what numbers of inputs creates what um, performance in the solution. And this kind of dumb algorithm has actually been proven uh, to be really useful to solve difficult problems in ways that we weren't expecting. So in this case, even though it's a more complex problem, um, you know, you can possibly think that, oh, well, I'll put less openings on the south side and more on the north, but it's hard to tell exactly how it's going to change uh, the result. So this kind of thing can be really useful for both for um, optimizing large amounts of geometry, but also for generating like unexpected solutions to problems. I'm going to let this run for a while, but um, I saved out some uh, tests I did last night, and you can see how this uh, ends up. So here I did exactly what we're doing now, and I let this run for about 34 generations. You see the result here that in the beginning it's getting better and better pretty rapidly towards the end. The improvements are a lot less. And then it focuses on one design. And you see out here it's a little bit unexpected, right? Um, in general, you see smaller openings on the south and bigger openings on the north. But in this groove here, you have slightly bigger openings because actually the geometry of the um, facade gives us some self-shading where these aren't directly, uh, the projections from these windows aren't contributing as much to the inside. And so this is uh, a range of times during one day. I uh, ran the same thing. Um, for one time over 12 months. You see it's a similar result, but slightly different. So you can run this kind of optimization for any setup using some of the same kind of solar uh, analysis ideas uh, from before. Okay, so anybody have any questions or comments about that? Again, the goal of showing you the optimization process is, um, I think it's really relevant to uh, the course in terms of talking about performance of buildings. There's some issues about performance that are sort of beyond our, our understanding and like uh, beyond our intuition. Um, you know, we can think about how a shape of a building or a size of an opening could affect things like wind and solar, um, but at some scale it becomes hard to use our intuition to design those things and at that point tools like optimization can generate the solutions a lot faster, um, assuming that we could set up the model appropriately. One example, but hopefully you'll find that useful on your projects. <laughs>